Hey guys, today's video I'm going to be talking about how I use my smartphone to create these YouTube videos. The equipment I use, how easy it is to set up and get going, and if you're thinking about creating a YouTube channel or just mobile filmmaking, now is never a better time. So let's get on with the video, I'm going to show you everything and break it down. If you're interested in any of the products I use and you want to pick them up, I'll link them all in the description below. So firstly I'm going to talk about the desk, the equipment I use, the lighting, the phone, and how you can create a space in your house and then turn it into your own YouTube studio. So let's go. Creating a studio is a lot of fun, but don't think you need all this equipment straight away. What I do is I just keep adding to the equipment I have and then it overall it just improves that experience. It'll give me more confidence to then go out and film in front of that camera. And then also you have that place then where you can just go out of the way and create some videos and edit them ready for YouTube. So I'm gonna go through some of these areas now. Firstly, what a big area is, is audio. Audio is so important. Recording footage on a smartphone is absolutely fine, but the audio quality isn't the best. So I use a Rode NT-USB Mini connected up to my MacBook, and then I just use the QuickTime music player or the Rode Connect to actually record that audio whilst I'm creating. But the Rode NT-USB is a fantastic microphone. It is small and lightweight, so it doesn't get in all of the frame. It's also got a magnetic base at the bottom of it, and its sound quality is its biggest feature. The sound quality is really good. It's what I'm recording on right now. You don't have to be super close to this to still pick up good quality audio. It also has a built-in pop filter as well, so that's great for recording audio. I also use this really cheap Amazon microphone stand with an additional pop filter as well. So if I'm getting really close to that microphone for voiceovers like this, then I might use both. But you can get away without one, but if you do want to pick one up, then this is really cheap and I'll link this or I got this from on Amazon. It's not the best quality, that pop filter is not very good, but because this microphone has one built in, then you can get away with it. Some of the more microphones, like more expensive ones, which you've heard of, don't have pop filters built in and that's when you would definitely need one. You can also screw it into the top here, so if you are streaming, if you're a gamer and you want to have that microphone uh, connected to it out there, you can do, not a problem. So audio is probably the number one thing you need to concentrate on after you've got the actual smartphone. The video quality and audio are essential. You could go the lav route as well, or you could get a shotgun microphone. All are good. I probably will be changing soon to a shotgun microphone, but get some good audio. So you need to mount your smartphone to something. So I've got this Amazon Basics tripod stand, and it is basic. It's not the best, it's pretty flimsy, but it does its job. It's really, really lightweight and it folds down so you can put it easily in a bag and the top of it swivels as well so we can adjust this, it is adjustable, so that's good. And this was only around about 15 pounds and it's good, you know, it's not perfect, but for me, I use this and I keep this just where I am in the studio and I have it in place all the time so I can just chuck my phone onto it. It never changes the actual height or anything because I only use it for creating videos so for a cheap stand which is going to be good enough then this is probably the best bet I used to have a 20 pound IKEA desk it was all right but it hurt a lot because it was so hollow so anytime you put something on it you could hear it so it needed some padding so I have upgraded to this it's a really thick black oak desk and this is from IKEA and this is good enough for the time being and then hopefully I will be upgrading this soon as well so this is an important one and it's a bit of a sore subject for me because I'm constantly changing it. But at the moment I've got this 2.75 meter paper roll as my backdrop. And this is because my studio is in a garage and we use it half as a gym and also half as my studio. So this paper roll on a newer stand allows you to have this really nice backdrop. It comes in loads of different colors. Potato Jet is obviously amazing at this and he has really nice different colors so you can get different ones i've gone for this light blue color and it's good because if it does crease you can just keep rolling it down and you get tons of it on the roll i think you get about 10 meters of paper on these rolls so if you are in an area and need to try and hide something maybe you've got a load of rubbish in the background or you've got a lot of boxes or you're in a front room or living room and you want to hide like the sofas behind you 
then this you can create your own wall and the only downside to this is is it does crease a bit so recently we've been painting in here so you can see some creases but it's not always noticeable on the actual video I also got some LED lights from Amazon. These were pretty inexpensive. I got an LED light and then I've just put some lights around the roof and these mirrors. It just makes the whole ambience really nice. And then the back wall was full of what a garage normally is, which is boxes and equipment and tools. So I got a really large three meter sheet and then I've put this onto the ceiling and that hides away all that. I am getting another piece of really cool gym equipment coming soon. So that should be here in the next few weeks and I'll show you guys that so that should be pretty good but yeah if you're wanting to have an actual backdrop and you don't want to spend too much money or effort a paper drop will do all right studio lighting super important if you're doing talking head videos so i've learned from the mistakes here and currently i am using the godox ulc 60 and then the qrp 90 softbox and can i just say this light this whole setup is absolutely fantastic it's big yes but it does a brilliant job it's lightweight you can move this around freely you could take this out with you for a studio shoot you could use this outside so it's brilliant and lighting is so important when you're doing talking head videos this just brightens up the scene so much and it's not overpowering you can change the intensity of it so as an actual product i was using to start with just a 20 dollar 20 pound uh, ring light and i thought that was all right it's not only until philip used to tell me every video what are that shadows doing what are you do with them shadows and he was right and he is right so i've moved over to this and the lighting is brilliant i will probably never have to change this this is dark now without that light on this is what it would be like in the studio and then turning this on it makes such a big difference if you can see here and they're using my ring light up to the right and to the left hand side of me these shadows all over the place on this as well the bottom left that 20 dollar ikea desk even when i got that blue background wall you can still see some shadows so ring lights yes they're cheap but they're not very good so i would if you can you want to invest some money get one of these i also have two of these little godox lights i sometimes use these on the bottom of my actual studio just to light the scene a bit more i use them a lot for product photos because you can change the colors of them get a remote control so these are really cool as well so for thumbnails and for product shots these are good to put in the background and you can change your whole kind of room ambience and colors just with these two lights the usb-c as well so you can plug them into a power bank really good okay laptops very important you're going to need something to edit your footage on now i use the macbook m1 air so i'll talk about it in a second and i've also got the m1 ipad pro don't need both certainly not uh, i'll talk about it in a second but the m1 macbook air is phenomenal it can handle 4k footage no problem it's an absolute beast to edit on it's also fanless so for voiceovers there is no fan so there's going to be no extra noise so voiceovers is perfect on this i also use a ssd drive i use a samsung t5 i have that velcro to the back of my macbook so i've always got extra storage and this is the one terabyte version okay the ipad now i thought about when getting this this could be my overall editing laptop or ipad not really not at the moment i could do yes i could use this as my all-in-one setup i just choose not to so i've got this on the actual magic keyboard so it's brilliant it's brilliant for replying to emails watching content that's about it i do use it for one extra thing but my main computer is this the macbook air m1 it does have a crack on the screen at the bottom which drives me crazy but by using both of these combined i get the best productivity I can use sidecar and then I've got the iPad as an external monitor and then I can have my file folder on one and Final Cut Pro on the other. I could do all my editing and so can you. If you've just got an iPad, you could use LumaFusion and do everything on there, not a problem. It's just because I'm so used to using Final Cut Pro. For me, it's a lot faster. You don't need Apple products whatsoever. You can use any, but by getting a decent laptop that can handle your footage, it's gonna make you get that workflow done faster and be able to create them 
videos. I do use the iPad a lot on notes to actually create some scripts when I'm writing them down. A lot of time it's run and gun, but if I do want to write a script, I'll put it onto notes, then pages, and then I can use that as my script machine. So both of them combined, they do work well. I will be getting a monitor hopefully soon to save my eyes, but for now, this is what I use. For thumbnails, I use Photoshop. I know it's a paid for thing, it's not cheap, but there's nothing else out there that compares for it. And I use Lightroom for all my photo editing. I will use Luminar AI as well, because that's pretty nifty. And if I'm on the go or I want a thumbnail done really quick, then you could use Pixar as well. This is a great little app and you can make thumbnails on here really fast. So if I want to just make an Apple sort of uh, video here, I could create this and I can put a title on here, I can put a border and I can have it ready. And what did that take? Maybe 20 seconds and that's done. So Pixar is also good for on the go. Now smartphone stabilization is great, but you're gonna need a tripod and I do use a gimbal as well. Currently I, I use this Monza MX gimbal. I will be getting the OM5 very soon, so I'll be reviewing that and I'll probably use that a lot. But I do use gimbals for a lot of B-roll. I also have a Manfrotto tripod stand. So you do need one for on the go. The stabilization is good, but it's not perfect. And then this Joby mobile video kit is also brilliant. I love the legs on here. I can just attach it to pretty much anything. The clamp on it's really good because it swivels completely backwards and forwards and then that microphone when we're outside to still get good audio outside. So you're going to need some accessories. This connects to my laptop. This is a USB-C dongle. It's great. It's got two USB ports, USB-A ports. I think it's two of them. It's also got memory card inputs and a HDMI input as well. So this is a fantastic one. Never let me down. Had it a couple of years now. It's perfect. All right, soundproofing. So I'm in a garage, so sound's not gonna be great. So I've got some really thick carpet just to the side of my desk and in front of it. And this helps with some soundproofing and to reduce any echoing. Because it's a bit of a gym as well, we've got some rubber gym mat. This not only looks cool, but it helps a lot with that sound. And I've also got some of them on the wall as well to help yet again with that echo. No point having really good sound and audio equipment if it's echoing all over the place. So get some soundproofing when you can. I film 80% of all these YouTube videos on my actual phone. This is the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I do luckily have a yearly upgrade program, so I will be getting rid of this soon. But for the last year, pretty much everything you've seen, any trips, any B-roll, uh, the Cornwall footage, all of it was filmed on the smartphone. The phone is great, the camera quality is phenomenal and the whole quality of it is great. Now for me, the workflow is brilliant because I can just airdrop this to the MacBook or to the iPad so it's fast. You don't need an iPhone, a Samsung or Huawei is more than capable. Smartphones these days are brilliant. You don't need to go out and spend thousands on a massive camera when you could just use that phone in your pockets. Just think of an idea, be creative, be consistent and then you can also so create a YouTube channel and smash it and good luck to everybody. So that's a wrap. So start off small. You don't have to buy all this equipment. Grab a phone, use that phone and get some good audio. Then I would upgrade your lighting and then I'd get a nice backdrop and then it's all about the editing. So editing I love and a lot of people don't, but I really like it. And then sound, sound design is it's so important. Just like that audio we talked about. So I use Soundstripe. I have my own playlist on here and I use all the music that I use in every single film and sound effects are all from here. If you want to check out this is also linked but when you are starting a youtube channel please don't go down the route of copyright free music it might be copyright free that day and then the next day you get a copyright strike that's it demonetized for six months don't make that mistake so hope you enjoyed that guys that's my setup let me know if you are thinking of setting up a youtube channel if you already have done and what's your best piece of equipment take care guys bye bye